on the night of the arson. They put on their masks and then placed the five-gallon fuel containers and activated the timing devices. The Earth Liberation Front is turning up the heat again, igniting devastating blazes all across the country. Fire bombings included attacks on lumber mills, wild horse corrals, and meat packing plants. This investigation was the largest domestic terrorism case in the history of the United States. Sometimes when you see things you love being destroyed, you just want to destroy those things. I was like, man, this is butchered. It made me think, like, why are we being so gentle? The goal is to just send a message that consumer America is destroying the world. When the big bad bully gets hit in the stomach and feels a little fear, that felt good. You're screaming at the top of your lungs and no one hears you. What are you supposed to do? The old adage that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter is true. And so at that point in time, you know, the more readily available uh, cameras like the P2 and, the, you know, the newer sort of um, hard drive based uh, cameras were really out at that point. Yeah, and even the HD cameras um, were either really big cameras or, um, I mean, really, the, there was not a good H, a small HD camera at that <laughs> point. And then when HD came along, uh, we just stayed with it because we thought it would be weird to suddenly crossover and as a result well into the into the process we were still shooting SD and um, that, that you know was a bit of a challenge yeah we had several interns uh, working as bloggers and transcribers and things like that on the movie we had an assistant editor uh, as well as a one of the producers also did a lot of the the, the digitizing the footage uh, the process was um, that initially uh, we, after all of all the, the verite, the story footage was captured, um, Matt just started going through it, and and he would watch it and do selects, and um, and then you know as we were shooting, I was also making notes about scenes that I thought were interesting, and 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 you know we were figuring out we had a sense even as we were shooting of what the arc of the story would be and how we would probably tell certain sections. Um, so part of it was coming from from the shooting. A lot of it also, I think, was coming from just looking at the footage and saying, wow, this this sings, this is zippy, this is interesting. Or that uh, might have been interesting. I mean, you know, one of the big challenges is there's a big difference between something being interesting to witness mm -hmm. and having interesting footage of it. And so there were situations where we would be in a, we would see something or film something that seemed awesome and then you get back in the edit room and it turns out not to be on, on film. You know, we knew from the beginning what our main character was and, and we knew what, you know, the film has a few different arcs to it. It's got the, the, the verite story of Daniel from the time he was arrested until the time he goes to prison. But we knew very early that, before we even started editing, that the movie would also be a lot about Daniel's backstory. How did he wind up doing this thing? And also the backstory of the movement, the, the kind of slow radicalization of, the, of, of this part of the environmental movement. You know, we definitely stumbled on characters. And I think we knew when we met those characters that they were going to be strong and each time that we met people they um, they would have a point of view that would stretch the movie's point of view um, and um, and so you know we decided to try to build that experience of meeting these people and having points of view stretched into the into the edit so that the audience would start off thinking one thing and then be pulled in another direction and then be pulled back in another direction and that was very you know, calculated. We would we would have a board with cards on it that would lay out who the character was, what kind of scene it was, what kind of emotion it was going for, you know, which direction it was taking us. But the opening was without a doubt the hardest. I'll let I'll let Marshall tell you about why that was the case. <laughs> I I guess so. 
you know, the beginning of a movie, uh, so many documentaries, particularly documentaries that are about an issue or something like that, open with news footage, like a news montage where people say, people basically, and, and the reason for that is because it's really easy. You can, you can lean on news to, to give your audience basic information and cutting between news scenes feels, you know, exciting, da, 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 da. there's a lot going on and, um, and I was really reluctant to open that way. I really wanted to open with a scene that was, um, it was a very tasty scene. So something, you know, one point we had it with Daniel riding the train out to visit his, his sister right before he went to prison. And then, and then it's at, you know, 16 months earlier and the movie be- begins. And another point, uh, there were a few different things that we were experimenting we lived, with. We lived with that for most months. months. Yeah, months. Um, and, uh, and Matt really wanted to take a crack at, at um, opening with some kind of news. And uh, finally one day he said, he said, I have an idea for it. We were getting, in addition to getting news stories, we were getting raw footage from the news. So footage that they used to build their stories. And he said, what if we, what if we use some of that footage in a cinematic way so that it feels like a move, like, I wanted the movie. I wanted it to start like a movie. I didn't want it to start like a news story. And so he said, "Well, maybe we can find a way of using the outtakes from the news stories in to 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 do both things." And and so I had been arguing with him, arguing, and finally I was just like, "All right, if it'll just shut you up, like, I'm gonna leave. You have the rest of the day to work on this." And so I left, and he worked on it for a number of hours, and he opened it with that helicopter shot of, of Vail, Colorado. And mm-hmm. the other thing that was that was interesting was the decision not to cut, to, we use news voices, but we never cut to the announcer themselves on screen. Mm-hmm. So instead we use these shots, these long shots of the fires that are happening that were shot by news and the voices of the people um, explaining who the ELF is. You may have heard of the Earth Liberation Front. The Attorney General himself says it's a domestic terrorist organization. The FBI says it is one of the most dangerous groups in the country. And I think the other thing was was that um, they they kind of give it a a, a bigness. You know, when you hear in America, the voices that you're hearing are Dan Rather and Peter Jennings and the guy from 60 Minutes, like these huge voices that every American recognizes as the main news announcers. and uh, and then it sort of ends yeah. with this bite that Matt found, which is they, they, like we ended the sequence more or less with this guy from 60 Minutes, and he says, "To this day, the Earth, with nobody in the uh, Earth Liberation Front has ever been caught, and the FBI knows little to nothing about their membership or the organization of, or of the of the group or something like that." And to start off a movie by saying that nobody knows anything about this group and then inviting the audience in to, to be in a kitchen with a guy cutting vegetables, you know, and, and as, in as sort of uh, familiar way as you can possibly be, sort of was, I thought, was, a, you know, a good way to start it out. Really gave it, you know, some energy going in. Yeah. 